So today we want to look at, look at uh, cash flow and balance sheet analysis. By now you should be familiar with uh, partial budgeting, you be familiar with enterprise budgeting, and you should be familiar with old farm budgeting. So today we want to look at uh, the last aspect of the farm planning methods. So cash flow and balance sheet analysis. Um, what is characteristics? What are the characteristics of a cash flow? Cash flow is commonly of cash inflow and cash outflow or any form of business over a given time period. Specifically, cash flow is used to estimate future borrowing needs and to estimate low repayment capacity for any business. So the aim is to be sure that um, by the time you are submitting your feasibility um, report, in order to apply for a loan, whether from a bank or from any financial institution, uh, you have a cash flow that is dependable, that the bank can look at and say, yes, um, we can borrow you or we cannot, based on whatever you have submitted. So it's a bit different from all farm budgets because no cash income and expenses are not included when, whenever you are preparing a cash flow budget. So cash inflow includes all the income from sales and proceeds from new loan, and cash outflow includes per payment on loan, cost of new capital, uh, cost of new capital assets. But you, you, you must not include depreciation or any form of in, inventory uh, decreases. Then in preparing cash flow, it is very important that you take care of the timing of your income and expenses. You know, when you are dealing with your own farm budget, you are not really bothered about the timing of the income and the expenses. But in cash flow, this is very, very important. And it's one of the basic difference between whole farm budget and cash flow. So in terms of the timing of your income and expenses, your cash flow budget can be done on monthly or on quarterly basis, at least to show uh, the timing of your inflow and your, your cash outflow. So most of the information needed for cash flow budgets can actually be found in other types of budgets. So it is important to prepare all these forms of uh, budgets. For instance, when, when you prepare your enterprise budget for different uh, uh, enterprises, the information will be useful for whole farm, at least the entire farm uh, budget. And all the information in your whole farm budget also are essential when you are preparing your cash flow. But the only thing is that you will not include non-cash um, items. So cash flow budget contains estimates or projections for a full short time period. You have the estimates, then you project. And um, there are so many printed forms for completing the cash flow. You can get some of these printed forms from any of these uh, financial institutions around us. Or even you can Google and see a lot of uh, templates that are being used. So, but almost lending, almost all the lending agencies actually have a cash flow budget form. Fiona, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Prof. Yeah. yeah. Let, us, let us look at your bank example now. Do you have uh, printed forms for cash flow budgets? 
for people that want to take a loan from your bank? Uh, yes, we do have, but I don't have with me right now because I don't work for credit. Yeah, okay, okay. No problem. I'd like, you can share it with your... I can share it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, yes. but that is what I, I'm saying. So you can share it with your colleagues so that they can... You two can look at the form and see the way uh, 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 it is done. Okay. So but this, the cash flow, yeah. the cash flow that I, that I will have is for individuals, not for companies. For companies, it's done by your auditors. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, but the one, the one that we are dealing with also is for individuals. Yes. Yeah, because okay. we are we are dealing with. Uh, we are looking at a case of individual farmer now that has interest in. Um, so an individual farmer at the bank is an SME. Yeah. yeah exactly. I don't have for those. I have for like Professor Ajetomo. Okay. Individual. <laughs> no yes, problem. Not yeah. a farmer. Uh, no, 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 not necessarily. I, I, I'm just using farmers because farmer is what we are dealing with now. So, but it's the okay. same. Yeah, it's the same. You know, the only thing it's is the same that, principle. Know, it's the same principle. It's the same principle. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. The same principle. The only the only okay. difference will be the items in your own will be different from my own, but the format is is almost the same actually. Okay. Yeah. So this is a typical simplified example of a cash flow budget here. So we have uh, estimating cash balance. Then items of your cash inflow. We have uh, your sales, capital sales, and so on and so forth. So you can look at the inflow, the outflow, then you have the cash balance. Then you know the, the, the borrow fund that you are going to need after estimating your cash, cash inflow and cash outflow. So then uh, you, you can see that in the first period, in terms of low repayment, you are not paying anything for the first period, but in the second period, then you have to pay. Yeah, but it's a very simplified one that we just have two periods, but all, almost all the items, uh, at least for a very simple uh, analysis of cash flow, are included here. But for a comprehensive one, I think uh, you have to rely on Fiona to provide a further, a further form. So they even is, ask you for your cows. <laughs> <laughs> they even ask you how many cows, how many goats. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what are the uses of a cash flow budget? Uh, the primary use of a cash flow budget is to project the timing and amount of new borrowing the business will need during the year. And the timing and amount of low repayment. The cash flow budget may suggest ways to rearrange purchases and the way you are going to schedule your debt repayment because we know okay, this my cash inflow, this my cash outflow, this is my balance, this is my loan, this is how far I've paid and every other thing, and what is needed. And again, it can help in tax planning and uh, assess cash flow problems. So it's, it's very, very useful, actually. So, um, when you look at partial budgets, enterprise budgets, pro farm budgets, cash flow budgets, these are farm planning techniques. So, they are farm planning. But you know, when, when we are dealing with uh, primary, primary functions of management, we, we divide the functions of management into three. The starting point is planning, which is what we have dealt with. The second one is control. And the last one is implementation, the, uh, the three most important uh, functions of management. So today we, we want to look at, we want to start with the control. Control. So the second primary function of management is control. It is a means of assessing whether the actual plan has been followed. Because um, it is not just enough to say you have a plan. You have to be sure that 
the, the plans are followed and you have a way of monitoring uh, your plan. So just like looking at your car, I, I think all of you, uh, I think you all have cars, isn't it? Yes. Uh, hey, yeah, anyway, I know, I know of you now. You have car. Uh, what of um, Lily? <laughs> yeah. I hope you all of us have cars. You go drive car too. <laughs> yes. All of us, bro. Okay, that's good. So, and as are you there? Are you hearing me now? Okay. So, just look at your car. You know, if you look at the dashboard, that is a kind of control panel. Now you will see the speed, the direction, the fuel supply, the oil pressure, and so on to identify malfunction, malfunction uh, functions. So in the same way, you must develop control system for your plan. That is very, very important. Control contains two major tasks. One is recorded information, and the second one is analyzing the information. So, and um, when we are talking of uh, control, as, a, as the second primary function of farm management, important techniques that we normally use include balance sheets and income statements. They are very, very important. Balance sheet and income statement. So today we are going to be looking at uh, the balance sheets. So we are going to be looking at balance sheet and its analysis. What is balance sheet? Balance sheet summarizes the financial condition of the business at a point in time. It's going to show you the financial position, the financial strength, if improperly done. The difference between balance sheet and income statement is very simple. Balance sheet is for a, a, a point in time where income statement is a financial transaction which occurred over a period of time. It's just like uh, coming to the owner's bank now and I say, okay, please, can I have my income statement? That is the first thing they will ask me is for how many months? So is, it, is, is that not what you will ask me? We don't even yeah. do it like that anymore. The machine just counts for you. Okay. <laughs> for this period, this much, right up to 60 months. Yeah. <laughs> Shortest yeah. period, three months. Okay, yeah. Mm. So we can see the difference is one is over a period of time and uh, the other one is at a point in time. So the starting point of constructing a balance sheet is to compile inventory and valuation of property. So taking an inventory is made up of two parts. We have the physical counting and the second aspect is what is called inventory valuation. So the accounting concept of conservatism and consistency in valuation be kept in mind anytime you are dealing with balance sheets. Conservatism cautioned against placing too high value on an item. Why consistency stresses the use of the same method over time? So let's look at the different valuation methods, but it's very, very, very important. Because we are dealing with farm um, uh, inputs. One method is the use of net market price. This method places a value equal to the current market price. And any marketing charges such as transportation, selling commission, and fees are subtracted in order to get the net market price. And we normally use this when you are dealing with items that are sold in short period of time. Maybe your grain, your hay, your feeder, your livestock, your seed bond, or stock, and so on. Another method is 
costs. Purchase items such as feed, fertilizer, supplies, and so on can be valued at the original cost. Building a machinery, machinery which depreciates should not be valued with this method because they are used for maybe um, more than one year, some two, three, four, five years. So they, they will have savage value and so on. So they come with depreciation. So you can't just use the ordinary cost in order to uh, do the valuation of machinery and building. Another method is what we call lower of cost or market. In this case, you will estimate the net market price, you will estimate also the cost, then you have to select which one is lower. So this method requires valuing an item at both its net market price and its cost, and then using whichever value is lower. Another method is farm production cost. So items produced on the farm and still on hand, where the inventory is taken, can be valued at their farm production cost. At this if you are so lucky, maybe you actually there when the farmer is selling at that particular time. For that is the best to so use the exact farm production cost. Uh, then we have costless depreciation. This is how to value your machinery and building because the property which provides services for business over a period of years or loses value over time due to age, use, or obsolete obsolescence to be valued at the original cost, less depreciation for machinery, building, fences, or she's breeding livestock and so on, a good example. And uh, in our last class, we actually looked at how to calculate depreciation. And uh, I appreciate all of you as you submitted on time. Um, very soon you will have your, your results. <laughs> I hope you are hearing me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the position can be calculated using straight line method, double declining method, and some of the years they did. But we have covered that one in our last lecture, so we are not repeating it here. So now your balance sheets depend on the inventory that you have uh, taken. That is the, the essence of taking the inventory is actually to use it to prepare your balance sheet. The balance sheet is a systematic organization of everything owned and owned by a business at a given point in time. So whatever you own that belongs to you or you are owing someone comes of debt all would have been covered in your inventory. So you will now organize the valuation of the inventory now into what is called balance sheets. And uh, in layman language, anything owned by you is your asset. And whatever you are owing others is a uh, liability. So the difference, the difference between your assets and your debts is your net worth, or that is what we normally call owner equity. And balance sheet is most appropriate at the end of the year, but anyway, there is nothing that stop you preparing your balance sheets any time of the year, but it's most appropriate at the end of the year. So. The primary use of a balance sheet is to measure the financial strength and position of the business. And there are so many measures from a balance sheet to guide us into understanding the financial strength and position of the agricultural business. Some of them include solvency, liquidity, net worth, current assets, intermediate assets, fixed assets, Current, inter current intermediate and long-term liability. So we're going to look at some of these things very quickly. And we're going to see how to calculate it. You must be able to calculate it and you have your assignment also to do. So solvency. A business is solvent where your total asset is greater than your total liability. If not, 
we say that the business is technically bankrupt. So when your liability is greater than your assets, then that is when we say you, you are technically bankrupt. Then liquidity. This may have the ability to generate cash. Um, cash needed to meet cash obligations without disrupting the production activities of the business. And uh, that's the ratio of your current assets to your current liabilities. Net worth. This may have the amount of money remaining for you after liquidating the business and paying all your liabilities. Current assets, that is your liquid asset. And um, they are either used up or sold in the next year as part of business activity. So it includes your cash on hand, checking and saving account balances, marketable stocks, bonds, accounts or not receivable, life insurance, repaid expenses, and value of growing crops. These are some items that are always included in your current asset. Intermediate asset, the difference between intermediate asset and current asset is that uh, intermediate uh, has a useful life that is more than one. And this includes machinery, equipment, you know, breeding livestock, so on. Then we have the fixed assets. The fixed asset covers the real estate or land and permanent buildings. Then we have your current liabilities. These are financial obligations due and payable within one year from the date of the balance sheet. So, and this covers all the short-term loans, including the principal payment on intermediate and long-term loans. Yes, we are talking of intermediate and long-term loans here, but whatever you are paying out of it, in a year must be included in your current liabilities. Intermediate liabilities, these are new, require no over one year payment period. Then you have long time liability to loan for the purchase of real estate. You know, and includes land and building that you have that you have used for for okay, so for, for collateral, yeah. So intermediate liabilities would be, for instance, say a manufacturing company. Intermediate would be the machinery that they use to manufacture. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah, perfect. As in machinery, all those equipment, they are intermediate liabilities. But long term would be the real estate, the buildings that. Maybe if I come to your bank now and I say I want to take it, you definitely you may require me to put down my house or my landed property, my CFO or something. <laughs> uh, so all those ones also, they are long-term liability. So then we, we have defined net worth, so let's, let's move forward. So this is a typical example of a balance sheet for a farmer. So under the asset here, we have the current assets, cash on hand, checking account balance, saving accounts, cash value of life insurance. We have grain, hay, feeder cattle. We have uh, miscellaneous supplies. Then you now have total current assets. That is addition of all those items. And that one gives us 86,500. Then we have intermediate assets that is just, just like um, Fiona rightly observed, machinery and equipment. Then uh, that's 72,000. Then beef cow, because if you have, if you have beef cow also, it's going to fall under intermediate asset. So you add it together now, the total intermediate asset there is 92,000. Then fixed assets, it will this include land, buildings. Then you have your total fixed asset to be 424,000. Then you now add everything together to form your total assets. So the total asset of this guy is 602,500. 
money. That is asset. Then again, you have your liability. So again, you have the current liability. You have account payable, accrued taxes, operating loan, accrued interest. Sorry, Prof. Yeah. So, so if this was a livestock farmer, the yes. those beef heads would have been current assets, right? No, the beef heads cannot be those unless those ones that you want to, to sell for that year. So what I mean is if if I was a livestock farmer, yes. so those cattle would be current assets because they're going to be disposed in a short period. Is that those ones that you know the, not all of them. That is, that's, that is the, the, it's very tricky. <laughs> because you are not selling all of them, but those ones that you want to sell within a year will fall under current land current assets. Okay, and then the others would be intermediate. So basically, the yeah. ones that would be intermediate are the ones that will not be disposed. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Okay, exactly. thank you, Prof. Yeah. So again, you see the way the balance sheets are. So you have the intermediate liabilities, then you have the, the total intermediate liabilities, and so on and so forth. Then you have your net what you have total abilities and so on, everything here. So the moment you have all of them, then you move to calculation of your ratio analysis. And uh, we are dealing with four different types of ratio analysis. Take note of them very, very well. The first one is net capital ratio, that is in uh, ratio of total assets to total abilities. It measures solvency. So, and insolvency like this, if the ratio is less than one. Because if the ratio is less than one, it means your total asset is less than total ability. Then we have debt equity ratio. That is your total ability over your net worth. If it is one, it means the owner is providing half of the capital and borrowing 50% of, uh, of the capital. So the, the smaller the ratio, the stronger the financial position. Because if it's very strong, it means uh, your total ability is less than your net worth. current ratio, this measures liquidity. Uh, I said that one earlier. If it's less than one, it indicates potential liquidity problem because that is when that your current asset is actually uh, less than your current liability. Then we have working capital ratio, that current asset plus intermediate asset over current liabilities plus intermediate liabilities. It, almost, it, it also measures liquidity, but the difference between working capital ratio and current ratio is the time period. So the interpretations are the same. So now we move to your assignment. You have two questions for this assignment. You will go back to this I am farmer. Then you will use the I am farmer to calculate your net capital ratio, current ratio, debt equity ratio, working capital ratio. And based on the financial ratios, you will advise the farmer as a bank loan financial official now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of the best thing to do. Yeah, I hope, I, hope the, I hope the question is clear. Yes, Prof. Yes, Prof. Yeah, that's good. So question two. Assume you are a loan uh, officer for a bank. You are still a loan uh, bank loan official now. And Lamini Farm Limited requests a loan based on the balance sheet below. You know, this one is already summarized, so this is simpler than the other one. You have the current asset, it's a midday, long term, and so on and so forth. Then you have the liabilities. And the question now calculate current ratio, working capital, debt structure. Asset ratio, equity to asset ratio, 
what is the weakest point of the balance sheet? What do you think is the way out of the weakness identified before? Under what condition can you grant the loan? So I hope the question is uh, the questions are very clear. Yes or no? We hope so too, Prof. Nigeria <laughs> sitting alone. We will ask questions. Ask questions now. We will ask Prof, but now it seems like they are clear, but we don't know when doing them. Maybe if we have questions, we'll consult. Okay, that that would be great. So that is that about cash flow and then um, balance sheet analysis. So and then. Um, in rural development, and I guess rural development, it is very, very important that you know how to advise a farmer on what is called resource use efficiency. Not only the farmer, also, but even small scale, small and medium enterprises, you will be able to advise them on uh, resource use efficiency. That is how efficient, how they can efficiently use. Uh, available resources in order to maximize their profits. And that is where these uh, production economies comes. You know, that is the production aspect now. And that is the practical that we want to do today. We want to quickly look at um, how to estimate uh, production function and interpret the coefficients and how to interpret and, and how to estimate, um, how to derive technical efficiency of every farmer and interpret the coefficient. That is what we want to do in the practical. Um, if you have not installed those um, software, no problem, I will explain. All of us will go through it and um, later we will practice it make sure you, you are able to um, repeat clearly the examples that we are going to go through together. So now we want to go to, go to our, um, we'll be going to, we'll be going to our, our now, can we see this? Our, uh, our, studio, uh, our studio, everybody? Hello? I can see, Prof. That's fine. Pilili? Pilili, are you there? I hope, I hope we have not lost our planning. I can only see, okay. I'm um, here, yeah, Prof. Okay, that's good. I just, I must be sure you are, I must be sure you are there. <laughs> Okay, can you see the uh, our studio? Yes or no? No. You cannot see the the our studio. No, I can't. Oh, wow. What is I can one? now. I can. Okay, yeah, that's good. Swani, are you there? Okay. Um, now we have um, the packages. I hope you know how to install the packages, really.
Bilini. I think I don't have benchmarking. I just need to load it quickly. Okay, I load your benchmarking. Bilini. Yes, Prof. Do you know how to install the packages? Yes, I, okay. I will. I think I'll be able to install them. Okay. Yeah, you know, you will do that later. But please, it's good to know how to do it. Wami, I hope I've not lost this guy. <laughs> Prof, I have the benchmarking now. Okay, that's good. So now uh, this is just loading the, the packages. So you run. So they are all loaded now. And um, I know uh, by now you should know how to how to handle descriptive statistics. Yes, I'm not admitting the descriptive statistics. I believe you should be able to do that. Do you know how to do descriptive statistics? How to get the mean, minimum, maximum. Other division medium. Hmm. I don't think I remember if I do know how to. Really? No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um. <Those> guys are funny. <laughs> okay. At least we are lowering your high blood pressure. You're laughing. <laughs> I don't have I don't have high blood pressure. You are telling that. <laughs> we all have. We're just not on medication for it. <laughs> I don't I do I don't I don't use medication. I don't put myself under pressure. Um well to do that is 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 simple. Oh, you want to do it? We need the. Uh, I think I taught you how to use summary tools. Yes or no? Hmm. Prof, we forgot it. Library. I think we we did that in, in the class. I remember summary tools. Oh, let's run it. So there is this data set we want to, to use. The data is milk production, milk production, N I L K rod. The data set is benchmarking. That's the one I want us to. To use. So then in loading the, the data, we just put data, then we put new plot. Let's run it. So if you run it, you want to see the data sets and use fix so that we we'll, can see the, the data editor. So let me show us. This is the data. So we have the farm number. The farm number here runs from one to one hundred and eight. These are one hundred and eight uh, uh, dairy farmers. Then this is milk, energy use. Then uh, 
drugs in terms of drugs, then you have couch. Is it okay up to that level? Anybody? I'm at names milk prod. Yeah, if you type names prod, it's going to, to give you the names. So we have farm number, milk, energy, bed, and house. Those are the variables to be. Yes. Okay. But do you have primary tools? Yes. Okay. So to do the primary statistics now. That's what we want. We want to do. Let, let, let's call it stats. I call it let's say start two. I will say with milk prod. What do you want to do? Describe. This describe. This is D E S E R. Primary two. And what do I want to describe? Milk. Milk prod. Then which statistics do I need? Start equals start equals common. We have we have done this before, so I don't know why. Maybe you have forgotten. So if you have done it correctly now, then I can run it. Run. So after running it, if I want to, to get my, my results, I will say view. So view, view for summary to view. What do I want to view? That is what I want to view. So run. So if you have done it correctly, you will see you will see it here. Descriptive statistics, make prompt. You can you have seen it. Mean standard deviation, minimum, medium, maximum, and the that's how to do it. Yeah. Did you understand that? Uh not fully, prof. You. Okay. <laughs> you do get it? Yes. Fine. So now, if you want to see your results clearly, because uh, or you want to move it to Microsoft Word. You come here on top. I hope you can see what I'm doing, this place. Yes. Uh, then click on it. Let me double click here. Get it. It's going to give me the results in a clearer way. Yeah, you can now see the results, everybody. Um, I am able to see them. 
Good evening. So, are you there? Yes. Yes, Prof. Yeah, that's good. That's how to do it. So now you can, you can select all air. Then you copy. Then you take it to your Microsoft Word. That's all. Then you edit. That's how to do it. So it's straightforward. Fiona, did you get it? Yes, Prof. That's, that's great. Yeah. So now let's 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 come to estimation of uh, of our model. Um, if you want to estimate of Douglas, let me let me put it here. Estimating. of Douglas production function. <clears throat> so if you want to do that, let's, let's call it CD. CD equals LM is the function for uh, linear model. So LM, we have log milk. Milk is our independent variable as a function of what are what are our independent variable? We have log energy plus log vex then plus log cow yeah, cow uh, after prof yeah after log milk how do i put that sign um i'm not seeing it on my keypad hey it's on your laptop Check check under escape. Oh, I see it. I see it. Thank yeah, you. that's good. Yeah. Then comma data equals yeah, our data is milk milk plot. So if you have done it correctly and you run, so you have. Yeah, so and then um, get our results. So summary CD. Um, so now we'll come to interpretation before we, we move to any other place. So all of them are statistically significant, we can see. So we can, we can interpret the, let us start with interpreting the. Is, is log cows the last thing on that line, Prof? Is there anything after cows? Log Data cow, that are equals me, Prof. Okay. Yeah. Then you get the formula. So let's wait for you to get the to get the result before we look at the application together. Okay, I was able to run it. Okay, and um, did you get it? I think I got it. Yeah. Kwani, did you get it? Okay. Oh, uh, 
Tan tebo e ya yu. Bilili, are you following? Yes, I am, Prof. Yeah, that's okay. Let us now look at how to interpret. Prof, I have a question. So the others have plus, and yet log milk has uh, a different sign. What does that sign mean? We the one see. that I was asking, where is it? This one. The one that's below escape. As a function yes, of, that one. Function of log mic as a function of. Did you get it? Yes, I need to write that down. Okay, <laughs> it's okay. So it's as a function of energy. Yeah, energy, cows. and cow. So now, if you look at this result, let's start with the starting point is you have to interpret the R squared, adjusted R squared. Let's start with adjusted R squared, which is 0 0.91. Really? What does that mean? 0 0.91. Pilini. Yes, Prof. 0 0.91 adjusted R square means what? How do you interpret that one? We need to go back to Professor Singh's notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I we learned this last semester. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 who That's taught you econometrics? We haven't learned economy. We haven't done econometrics. Okay, you have not done econometrics. Yes. yes. Okay, 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 no problem. But I know uh, Dr. Sim must have taught you something related. No, no problem. Then let me explain to you how to how to explain it. Now we want to know what percentage of changes in milk is explained by the independent variable. So in this case, we say 91%, because this is 0.91, 91% variation in milk. 91% variation in milk. It's explained yes, by what? The independent variables, which are energy, debt, and power. That is what this 0.91 is. Uh, showing us. Then air statistics, it had is 367.5. The air statistics is showing, is showing us, you can see the p-value is what concerns you. This p-value here is um, zero. You said the independent variables are vet, energy, and cows. And cow, yeah, energy, vet, and cow. That's what we do. Okay. That's what we've used. Energy, bed, and cow. That's it now, you, in what we have estimated. So it means they explain um, nine, about 91% variation in meat production. In the, uh, in the place where the data is collected. So, the air statistics is statistically significant. This is 2.2 .2 multiplied by 10 is power minus 16, which is 0 0.0000000. So it's highly significant. So, which means um, the, the variables energy, weight, and count jointly 
influence milk. The joint See that there's a second floor? Okay. What does it mean? Energy vet cow. They jointly influence milk production. Well, this is talking of their joint effects. They joint all of oh. them put together now influence milk. That is what this health statistics is telling us. Okay, so, Prof. Yeah. I missed that key word. You said the independent variables have what effect? Jointly the key word. influence. They have joint effect. Joint. Oh, joint effect. Jointly, yeah. Joint. J O I N. Okay. Jointly. Thank you, Prof. Yes. So when we have confidence in the function that we have estimated. Since we, we have that now, then we can now interpret the, the coefficients. Let us now come to the coefficients. If you look at the coefficients, let, let's, let's start with energy here. Energy is 0 0.12. Meaning what? Believe me. Are you try? Um, I think if it's zero point one, um, the relationship is not that strong. It doesn't strongly influence. Hey, no, no, no. We have already no. said that. We have already said that it influences. So do. No. <laughs> I think. Okay, okay if you want to try, yeah. Does that 0 0.12 mean 12%? Yes, it is 12, 12%. Yes, we are correct. 12%. So in the joint effect, 12% is from energy, 9% from the vet, and 85 from the cows. Um, no. This is the way to interpret no. it. Please listen very well. This means that um, if I increase my energy by 1%, if I increase my energy by 1%, then my milk production will increase by 12%. By 0.12%, sorry. If I increase my energy by 1%, you talk of percentage because this is in log form. If I increase my energy by 1%, then milk production will increase by 0 0.12 percent, not 0 0.12 units. Everything must be yes, 1.2 percent. Yeah, yes. good. And if I increase my vet by one percent, then my milk production will increase by about 0 0.1 percent. And if I increase my our head by one percent, then my meat production will increase by 0.86 percent. I hope it's clear. Yes, Prof. Yeah. Yes, Prof. That's good. So now. If we want, if our interest is to estimate the technical efficiency for every individual milk producer, then we have to estimate what is called frontier production function. Frontier production function. The function. Um, I have a note on this yield of efficiency. Uh, maybe we should quickly go through the notes. Oh no, let us estimate this, no problem. And if you understand this, then the note is very, will be simple for you to understand. So, to estimate that, I call it FF2. Here I have frontier dot dot SFA. What are we counting there, Prof? 
we want to estimate frontier production function here because there's no way you can drive efficiency for each farmer without estimating the frontier production function. I want, I want to know how efficient each farmer is. Do you understand that? Yes. Yeah, I want to get the level of efficiency of each farmer. I first need to estimate their frontier production function. So to do that, I say frontier dot dot SFA, this is stochastic frontier analysis, SFA. Then I repeat whatever I've done up there is the same thing. Let us add the plus plus log cow log cows. The same thing. Yeah. So, so we will run it. Then we have summary FF2. But here I say extra parameter. I will explain all those things to us when the result comes out. So let's let's run it up to summary before we derive the efficiencies. So, Good. So here we have our results. You can see we have so many things now. Of course, this one is using maximum likelihood estimate. Yeah. The energy is still around the 0.12, but you can now see that it is no longer 0 0.29, it's already reduced. Then we have your cow is still around 0 0.8. It eight now. Um. Then for it starts, you can see the overall efficiency of all the mean efficiency of all the of, of all the farmers. The mean efficiency is zero point eight six. So. Which means that a certain level, what is the level of inefficiency? Hmm? Where is the level of inefficiency? Anybody? Fiona? Sorry, Prof, you've left me behind. I'm still trying to put <laughs> that first function. Okay, so okay. what is after? Please scroll to the right. Okay. Okay, That's you can go back to the left. Summary. When you type that extra part, should it come out automatically? It's supposed to come out automatically, but remember this P is capital. They don't forget comma. If you don't put comma after the summary, then it will not work. Then be sure there is no error time after running your Mine message. is not bringing it up. Mm, let me try again. No, it's not bringing it up. I don't know what I did wrong. 
Okay. Well, what is the error? The, the error code. There's no, there's no error as yet. But when I call up extra, it only gives me extract AIC. It doesn't give me that extra part. Um. Okay. Do the summary without extra part and see whether you have result. I beg your pardon. Do the summary without extra part. Just say summary FF2 and see whether you are going to get a result. Okay. Yes, I was able to get it, Prof, without the extra part. Okay. Now, do it again. Put comma, be sure it's comma after FF2. Your extra part is PAR, not PER. And extra is all small letter. P is capital. A R then. Okay, let me try again, but it, it doesn't bring it up. Uh, just, it doesn't matter. Just try again and, and run it and see. Okay, it's there now. Yeah, fine. Okay, I have it, Prof. Yeah, fine. That's, that's great. Yeah. So, to calculate the efficiencies, And I want the efficiency scores for each farmer to be in my make prod um, data. That's why I say make prod dollar. I call my efficiency EFF equals to frontier this, this. Efficiencies, this is the function, efficiencies. So let me let me run let me run run this and if I say edge, I, which means I want the efficiencies for the four six uh, farmers. So let me run it here. Yeah. yeah. If you have done it correctly, this is what you will get, which means the efficiency for farmer one is zero point eight nine. And my tool is 0 0.92. Let us wait for you to get it so that I will explain to you how to explain. Mm. Okay, I have it, Prof. Ah, that's that's great. So, and uh, you have your eight milk prod, and you have everything. You have the efficiencies now for each farmer. Yes, yes. That's good. So, how do we now interpret this efficiency? That's the, that's the next thing we want to do. <clears throat> Who wants to try? The efficiency is called of the, the first farmer. 0 0.89, let's, let's say 0 0.9. So it means what? Who wants to try? Fiona, do you want to try? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I'm waiting. 
who wants to try and, and interpret for me? Prof, I actually didn't even get it quite well with how we were doing the, um, the frontier projection function. The one where we did the extra part, I missed the part because I was busy typing. I missed the part of that interpretation. But it's fine, I will listen to your video. Okay, no problem if I, let us, let us look at um, some more details of um, coming new shell let me let me let me see whether i have the the powerpoint No. Let me get the there's a PowerPoint which I want I want us to to look at. That's that's to do with presentation one. Okay, this one. Oh, let us quickly go through this. It's going to become clearer to you. Okay, so Prof. Thank you. Yeah, estimation production because I, I I don't think you have uh, you have done it at all in the class. So why do we estimate production efficiency? We estimate production efficiency to have knowledge about production technologies and producer behavior. And this is very, very important for politicians, for business organizations, for governments financial institutions and other organizations who desire to know how policies and markets affect um, production, prices, income, and resource utilization. So then why do we estimate production efficiency? It's to calculate the efficiency cost of individual producers so that we can identify those who need intervention and correct these measures. Because efficiency scores always vary across producers, just as what we have discovered now in, uh, in what we have just uh, estimated. Stochastic frontier analysis can be used to examine effect of intervention, such as bank efficiency change after the regulation, as change varies across ownership and so on and so forth. So, and then, um, in order to look at the theory, um, there are a lot of, maybe I think I, I, I will try and send to you uh, a material. I think I, I should have a book so that you can get the theory correctly on concept of efficiency. Uh, but the summary of, of it is what I want to present here. So production efficiency means attainment of production goes without waste. And the fundamental idea underlying all efficiency measures is the possibility of, possibility of um, production to attain optimum level of output from a given bundle of input at least cost. 
your target is profit maximization. You want to maximize your profit at least cost. You want to get the maximum output using the least cost approach. So we can classify our, the, our efficiencies into three. We have the technical efficiency, additive, and economic. Technical is what we just get with. When we talk of technical, a fair mistake is said to be technically efficient if it produces as much output as possible from a given set of inputs. So we call it maximum output from a given set of inputs. So all those, every other thing is talking about um, RA 1957 and several other people that pioneered the, the work. But according to Fahrenheit 57, technical efficiency evaluates a farmer's ability to obtain maximum possible output. That's the keyword, maximum possible output from a given set of inputs. And, but when you want to include allocative, then that reflects the ability of the firm to use input in optimal proportion given their respective prices. So when you are now uh, putting your price, your prices into the equation, then you are getting allocative. Then the product of allocative and, um, and technical is economic uh, efficiency, which is the ability of the firm to produce well-specified output at minimum cost. How do we measure efficiency? Uh, one way is to use ordinary least square residual from estimate of production. Uh, in our next class, we are going to see how that is done. We are not doing that today, so I won't bother myself about that. But another method is to use the classical method, that is, you use the ratio of your output to particular input. That is, we call it partial measure. For instance, I mean, want to look at um, now that in our equation we have milk, uh, we have vet, we have cow weight, and we want to look just look at ratio of milk to cow weight. Yeah, it's a measure of efficiency, but that is partial because it's not considering other input. That is, is part of the classical method. But the one that we have just done is the use of what is called frontier method. This measures the productivity of all the inputs at once. So, and um, that is what we have, we have, we have, we have tried, tried to do. And there are various ways of measuring the frontier. We have no parametric parametric. The one we have done is a parametric approach that is stochastic front analysis. Um, maybe in our next class, we're going to look at the data development analysis approach. So these are some materials that you can uh, uh, read. So you can read some of, the, of some of these things. But what we are trying to do, because let me make, make it uh, clearer to us, in terms of SF, SFA, we'll be considering this again when dealing with A, but let us look at SFA. This is a frontier. This frontier is talking of the maximum possible output, the maximum possible output that uh, the farmers can produce. So every, every farmer will be aiming to, to get to this particular um, frontier. That is the maximum. In fact, we can see a farmer here at this point, I think that's point B, is already on that um, uh, frontier. Anybody on this frontier will be 100 percent. That is one. Anything less than one, because in, in, in our estimate, for instance, whatever is less than one will be below these points. So, and our interest is to calculate 
the distance between a farmer and this particular frontier. And look at why. Why are you not on this frontier? Why do you have inefficiency? So anybody that is not on this frontier means is operating inefficiently. So then the difference between the method D and an SFA. So this is the one, the type that we have just done. Yeah, this is the example of the results that we had just now. Oh, and then in terms of interpretation, also, I want us to please pay attention. We will go back to our R again so that you, you will now do the interpretation of me before we round up the class. So the coefficient of the um, Cobb-Douglas function, is still Cobb-Douglas function, with the direct elasticities, just like the way we interpreted it uh, with those Cobb-Douglas average production function. So, but if you look at the result of frontier, you will see sigma QV, that is the variance parameter of the error time. Then you will see sigma u, which is the scale parameter of the inefficiency time. Then you will see sigma u and sigma v. Then you will see gamma. Then you will see ratio of sigma to sigma and so on. You will see. So if gamma is zero, it means the inefficiency time is irrelevant, which means you have to use your ordinary least square. If gamma is one, it means um, error time is relevant. It means um, every problem in the model is due to inefficiency. But if it is less than one, we are going to, I will show you again in the model, then you will interpret it for me when we get back to R. But the moment your gamma is less than one, it means both the error term and the inefficiency are very, very, very important. But inefficiency is more important than noise, because you know this is almost one. So, But the most important uh, parameter that we are going to interpret is what is called gamma var. In this case, it's 0 0.76, sort of we show that about 76% of the total variation is explained by inefficiency. We interpret that one for me when we get there. That is the most important thing, because we want to know this efficiency that we have calculated this is using VA to, to do that. Let us now go back to, let's go back to our R. Um, yeah. Good. Let us now come here so that I show you some of those things that I'm seeing. This is gamma here. Gamma here is 0 0.93. Uh, Fiona, are you there? Fiona. Really? Yes, Prof. This gamma means what? 0 0.93. Um, Prof, since it's less than one. Yes. <laughs> it means both the 
Turkish. Both noise. Mm -hmm. and the noise is inefficient. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, important. Important. I clap. Each prof I'm trying to follow. Box. I think I'll get it when um listening to the recording, like watching the recording. I'm yeah, no problem. You will get it. You see the let me let me explain a little bit further so that by the time you are listening to it again, you will get it further. Mm. You see, when you are producing. Mm -hmm. Um, you're supposed to, to be efficient. That is, you have to produce the maximum output at which least cost. If you are doing that, if you are doing that, then you will be on the frontier. You will part. Everybody will want to learn from you. If you are, if you are like that, then you are going to be one. But if you are not like that, if you are not one, it means you have certain level of inefficiency, or it could be due to maybe some uh, factors that you have not included, that you have not catered for as your error. So what we are trying to do when you are running frontier production function is that your production is affected by certain variables, but apart from those variables, you have the error, then you have the inefficiency. Mm -hmm. Are we together now? Yes, Prof. Ah. So, which means, for instance, here we have zero points, the, the, the average, let us first look at the average before we look at individual. The average here is 0 0.86. If you take 0 0.86 from one, it's going to give us what? 0 0.14. Good. 0 0.14. Yeah, it's going 0 to 0 0.14. It's going to give us 0 0.14. So then that is 40%. So that 40% is, is, is due to either noise. Noise means from factors that you have not included in your model. Or maybe that may even be impossible to, to be included. It may be measurement problem. It may be certain uh, factors that you can know is, that, that, that are not easy to measure, like attitude like uh, culture, like so many, like environmental use, and so on. For instance, now in the, the, in the model, we have not included, in, in, uh, we have not included the uh, uh, marital status, it's not there. And marital status may affect your production. So those factors that we have not included, they, they are, we, we call them noise because we say they are less important. They may be the reason why you have that 40%. But apart from those noise, another reason why you have that 40% may be your own inefficiency. That is, you are not actually making use of the resources uh, the way they're supposed to be used. You're not using them optimally. Maybe you're supposed to use uh, one kilogram of fertilizer, you are using 1.2 or 1.3, or you are using less than one. So now, now we have 0 0.86, which means you have certain problem with both noise and inefficiency, they, they are important here. Yeah. I hope it's clear. That, that is yes. what gamma. That is what gamma is actually um, telling us. So then I told us gamma var is very, very, very important. Gamma var. Our gamma var here is zero point eight two. It means what? 
explain explain what gamma bar means. Who wants to try? <laughs> <laughs> Just try or look at what I've told you or, or your notes. Mm. I have no idea, Prof. Really? Yes, Prof. <laughs> what is it? Okay. It seems you guys don't know it. Um, I told us that now, please listen because I want you to get it. Here we have 0 0.86, isn't it? I hope it's clear up to that level. That is your mean efficiency. Yes. Which means your inefficiency, your mean inefficiency is 0 0.14. I hope that one is clear. Yes or no? Yes. That's good. So now that 0 0.14 is made up of noise and inefficiency. I hope it's clear. Yes. Okay. So out of that 0 0.14, which one is due to inefficiency? Which one is due to noise? You don't know, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, good. So what gamma bar is saying here, gamma bar is 0 0.82, is, is showing us that 82% of that 40%, that is of uh, the inefficiency. Uh -huh, yeah. It is due to inefficiency, that is of, of the error time. You know, you know um, 75% variation is due to inefficiency. <sighs> Uh, we, are, we are talking of 82% here. Yeah. We are saying that 82% of the total duration is explained by inefficiency. Eighty-two percent of the fourteen percent variation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of the, no, the variation is forty percent. You, you understand it? Yes. The variation for one is uh, is fourteen percent. You understand what I'm saying? The variation is actually fourteen percent. Eh? So eighty-two yeah. percent of the variation is due yeah. to inefficiency. Yeah, exactly. So which means uh, the balance now you can calculate the balance. Mm -hmm. you no, know, eighty-two percent of that fourteen is due to noise. Efficiency. So the balance also will be due to, to noise. Which is made up of noise and inefficiency. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, Prof. Yes, Prof. Yeah. I take it again. What is very, very important? Your efficiency is your efficiency is supposed to be one. That is, which means you are efficient. You have no problem. You are, you are, it means on the average, uh, uh, the farmers are efficient. Well, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's 0 0.86, which means you have 14% variation. 
from being efficient. So, and we say that this variation can either be due to error and inefficiency. So, gamma VAD is telling you that 82% of that variation is due to inefficiency. So, then the remaining 80% uh, will be due to noise. Simple. Did you get it? Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> so now, interpreting the efficiency level of each farmer. That's the only thing we want to do now, then we close the lecture. Here is 0 0.9. Um, if you take this from, from one, it remains what? If you take? If you take 0 0.89, and now let's oh. use 0.9 from one, then you have what? 0 0.11. Yeah. One. So which means you have around 0 0.1. So, which is 10%, but it's around 90%. So, this farmer is 10% inefficient. Is that clear? Yes, yes. Uh, which means the farmer can still make use of uh, the inputs that he used, all those inputs together, mean energy, bed, and carbon. The farmer can still improve the use of those inputs to be efficient by 10%. You can still improve, you can still make use of this input to be efficient you can still improve. The farmer can make use of the 10%. Yeah, 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 yeah. In order to attain the maximum level of uh, output, yeah. you still have 10% improvement that you can make. So, which means the farmer is not optimally using this input. That's it. Yeah. And you can interpret that for every individual you can see. Right up to farmer six. Yeah, you can have this efficiency. We have this efficiency for all the 108. So the average is the 0 0.86. So you can have it for every individual. And that is what we have done today. Um, no problem, no, in our next class, by God's grace, we are going to still continue because this is using a Ocasio Frontier method to estimate the efficiency. In the, in the next class, we are going to make use of data envelopment analysis in order to estimate it. So we still have opportunity to go through the, the explanation again and again, so no problem. But maybe before then, you two should read more about this particular um, uh, method and be able to advise a farmer and say, okay, ah, the level of efficiency is this or that, you know, it's inefficient. So the moment you have the data, you too can estimate the efficiency um, level. Okay. Yeah. So any other question? Prof, when is the assignment due? Um, today is... Uh, Thursday, 28th. Thursday. So uh, that it should be due before Tuesday now. It's a very simple one. So it's due on Tuesday, June 2. Yeah, June 2. So when next are we going to have a class? Ooh, um, 
Pilila can't have classes on Friday and Saturday. Can I just confirm my um, diary? Uh, okay. Just decide, decide, then you get back to me. Yeah. Thursday, 2 o'clock for me is fine. I don't know if this corner is okay, but let me discuss it with him. Yeah, you have to discuss it. Yeah. And then I'll send you a message. No problem. Thank you, Pro. Okay. 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 Yeah, all right. Bye. Bye. Warning. Bye bye. <laughs> okay.